Welcome everyone to Ham Radio Adventure 7 and 73's. Mark here, WB2AHH on the eastern shore of Maryland. I thought based on some questions by viewers that I would go over a few things about the tower, grounding and secondary antenna pole. I was asked several questions about lowering and then lifting the tower and thought maybe I could shed some light on the process for those of you who stated you were about to undertake this type of project. My son-in-law came in to visit from Dallas for Thanksgiving with my daughter, of course, and he flew his drone around for me and took some nice pictures. You'll see some of them later when I explain the dynamics of the tower and some of the modifications I made. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Ham Radio Adventure 7. If you've seen any of my previous videos, I showed you how I raised, reconditioned, and, uh, well, I should say lowered, reconditioned, and then raised my tower. This is not an instructional video, it's just an explain, explanation of how I did my tower. Um, I guess you could call that a disclaimer. I'm not telling you how to do it, I'm showing you what I did. And some of the modifications I made to be able to lift, lower, lift, lower, lift, lift the tower. <clears throat> I have some drone video, my son-in-law brought his drone over and we took some pictures of how I rigged the tower now that it's up there and I'm gonna be able to show you that later. But this is not instructional as the disclaimer, it's just how I did it. Now, this is a Roan 64, BX64 tower. It's got eight sections of eight feet makes it 64 feet and I was told after talking to a couple of experts I talked to criticaltowers.com they were very kind explained to him what I had I had the tilt base tower for the roan and um, he told me that I should lift it from the 40 foot level so if you go five sections up where the two sections join each other that's where my lifting strap went now in order to get that lifting strap up there, because the tower had been up for 14 years, I used it for another purpose other than amateur radio. Um, we had some tree climbers here that were doing some limb cutting for me. And for an extra 50 bucks, they went up the tower, put the strap on, and went on the other side by a tree I used for the other side of the cable. I'll explain that in a minute. But I couldn't see paying somebody $50 and probably more like a hundred if they had to come just to, to go up and get my strap off the tower. I couldn't see paying that all the time. So what I did was I wanted to figure out a way that if I need to lower or raise the tower, um, it was easy for me to do. So up around the 40 foot mark, originally I had a strap. It was a lifting strap, 12,000 pound capacity and we wrapped it twice around the 40 foot level. From the 40 foot level, I had a half inch uh, winch cable, 150 feet long. We hooked up to that strap and I went back with that cable to a very tall tree I have back here. It's a giant pine tree, probably 80, 90 feet tall. And I put another lifting strap around here with a pulley. It's very important you use the pulley because the pulley, you don't want the cable on the bark of the tree. There's so much pressure lifting and lowering the tower on that cable that it'll just cut through the bark as I found out one time when I tried to do it. So you don't want to do that. Then the other end of that winch cable came down. I hooked it to the front of my pickup truck and lo and behold, it was a pretty good lift. It was, it was fairly easy. I calculated about 1,200 pounds of winch tension on that cable to get the tower to start to move. Now, let me go over a couple of things that I did here also. You don't want this cable too low. If this cable's too low, you now have concrete at the base of your tower. This tower has three foot, one inch diameter rods going down into the concrete, three of them, one on each leg. What I did was, uh, if you go too low, what the tower people explained was, number one, 
the amount of pressure won't be 1200 pounds, it'll be a lot more. And what happens is based on the angle of the pull, you could bend those rods or worse yet, crack your concrete, which you don't wanna do. Now, originally this base was supposed to have four yards of concrete on it. But what happened was due to water underground, we poured the normal pour but what happened was the water was washing away the ground. So we ended up with a pour that looked like this. It was uh, quite a bit of concrete we had to use. So instead of four yards, it was more like 15. So this tower is not going anywhere, but I certainly don't want to crack the concrete. So let me explain the concept of that lift. You can do this at home and try it and you can see what I mean. If you go too low on this tower, you're putting tremendous pressures on the base of the tower. So what I did was, as an experiment, I took a 10-foot PVC, 10-foot piece of PVC, and laid it on the ground. Behind it, I put a cinder block, just so it wouldn't move. And then what I did was, I tied a string here, at the end of the PVC. With that line coming out this way, actually, let me make it a straight line. When you pull to try to lift this, you can feel how much more tension there is trying to pull that rod up. That angle is, is too, too low. So when I pull this, all the pressure goes back towards that cinder block, and I can actually move the cinder block before I pulled up the PVC. So what I did was, what they told me to do with the tower, I made the lift, the line this high. Now, if you take that piece of PVC and put the line up that high and pull on it, that PVC will come right up like it was nothing. So I calculated the lift based on the weight of the antennas totaled with the tower, manufacturer specs on the tower. Erase that. And I figured out, I found a formula online, converted it to Excel. And I found out it's about 1,280 pounds of tension on the cable to start to lift this tower when it's in the down position. Now, when the tower was down, I had, uh, I had a horse made. Actually, I made it. And that horse is about seven feet tall. So what happened was when the tower came down, it laid, it laid across that horse. And when it laid across that horse, it was approximately 15 degrees on an angle. Now I'm telling you this because you don't want that tower to be horizontal. Now I've seen people on YouTube lift the tower when the tower was horizontal and they got lucky on it, but I wasn't gonna bend this tower with the antennas, mast and rotor and everything else on top of it after all the work I did. So we start on an angle. And with the calculations I found online, you can actually calculate, I told you it took about 1,200 pounds of pull of tension on that cable to lift this tower. And as the tower goes up more vertical, that it becomes lighter and lighter to the point where it's only like 100 pounds to pull on the cable. But what happens is if this thing is low, I calculated it's almost 3,000 pounds. And I didn't want 3,000 pounds pushing on the base of those rods. So this is just a little brief explanation. When you see the videos of the drone, you'll understand it a lot better. Um, I made a modification at the 40 foot level of the tower. I put permanent straps on it and a line which is tied at the base of the tower. So if I ever have to lift it again, I don't have to call for the tree climbers to go up this tower. Uh, Save me a lot of money in the long run. So let's move on to the video and I'll show you the two different straps I used and how I modified this tower. This is the 40 foot area of the tower and you can see the cables that are wrapped around that section. Let me explain. What you're seeing there is two four foot quarter inch steel cables covered with plastic, clear plastic. 
And what I did was I put a second one in there. There's two of them just for safety. I figure one could snap, maybe not another. But anyway, um, the tensile strength of those cables are 4,000 pounds each. And you can see they're going through eyelids. Let me give you a close-up of the eyelids and I'll show you exactly how I mounted these cables. What I found was some stainless steel eyelets and they had threads on them. And what I did was I took them to the welder friend of mine and for 10 bucks, he took three of those bolts, those tower bolts. He cut the threaded part off from the eyelets. And what he did was he welded, and I must say he did a fantastic job. Uh, he, did, he welded those on top of the bolts that belonged to the tower. And then I screwed them in and torqued the tower bolts up. I chose the opening in that eyelet to be big enough to get those cables through because they have a loop on the end. And it worked out very well. Not only did it hold the tower, but there's actually no pressure on the actual eyelet, vertical or horizontal, any way you look at it. All the pressure is up against where the two tower sections have been bolted together. Now this is a shot of the side of the tower that faces the tree with the pulley on it. And that takes, that's where the pressure comes in on the cables. You'll notice that I looped the cables through in opposite directions so they didn't unravel. Worked out very well. There's no problem. It's not rubbing anything. Uh, even the plastic where it was laying against the tower barely had any marks on it whatsoever. This shot kind of shows the whole setup with the cables around the tower through the eyelets. And what I did was, so I don't have to hire a climber or a bucket or anything like that, I just hung it straight down with a steel cable that comes all the way down to the base of the tower and that is tied off. So if I ever need it hooked up again to lower the tower, that portion is still there of the cabling. And it makes it a lot easier if you have to do maintenance on the tower. This is how I rigged the tree with the pulley on it so I could lower and lift the tower. That's a 10 foot lifting strap, very high capacity. It's wrapped twice around the tree, comes down, goes into a uh, some type of clevis hook, I forget the name of it, and it goes into a pulley. That pulley has the half inch winch cable on it, and one end goes to that wire on the tower I told you about that I left up there, so if I ever need it, it's available. And the other side has a hook on it that goes onto the tow hooks of my pickup truck, and that's where I can make the pull from. Worked out very well. That strap will hold up for quite a while in the weather, so I'm gonna leave it up there until spring and determine, I think I have an idea how to put something up there permanently that won't hurt the tree, and it'll be up there if I need it for the cabling. I like to keep these videos at around 15 to 17 minutes, so I didn't get to every subject I wanted to get to today. Example, I'm gonna set up uh, a new dipole, uh, telescoping pole to put the center of my dipoles up higher than they are. Right now, they're only 12 feet off the ground. I wanted to show you the grounding system now that it's complete and some of the cabling features that I put on the tower. I will have to get to that in the next video. We also, my radio club, this coming Saturday, December 10th, is going to have an antenna build. Uh, we're going to do it at my place. There's going to be uh, mainly J poles being built for 2 and, and uh, 70 centimeter. But uh, all that stuff I want to get on video and share it with you guys. I appreciate very much watching the video. I appreciate the comments. Uh, so far, it seems like everybody that's watching likes it. And I will try to keep them short to keep your attention. Thank you, and hope I answered the questions for the people that asked me how I was lifting the tower. 73s, everybody. See you later.